This is the final part of how to service a mixing desk. Um, I'm going to show you how to clean out the jack socket, so get your cotton buds handy. As you can see I've gone through about, I don't know, nearly 200. Uh, get your toothpicks handy because you use those for cleaning out the XLR pin holes, the female connectors. Always keep some Deoxid D5 handy for whatever you come across. And, and some of this alcohol, the 99.9% .9 stuff, links in the description. It's isopropyl alcohol, it's great. Um, I also give the ribbon cables a clean, so with this stuff, so I'll show you how to do that. And I give all the ribbon cables a wipe down because dust can gather anywhere on the inside, so anything inside or any part of the desk wipe down just so no dust goes in it. Um, so I'll show you all of that, all the links in the description. So I hope you enjoy. Just a more in-depth look at how I clean out the jack sockets and the XLRs. So as you can see, this is a pack of 200 cotton buds. I've already done nearly 100 already on this desk. What I, did, what I do is pour out, okay, drop a cotton bud in. I pour out some of the alcohol into a container, dip the cotton bud in, make sure it's not too wet, and just clean out the inside of those jack sockets. So give it a bit of a twist as you're doing and make sure you get all the edges. So it's not too bad, but it still comes out a little bit dirty. I sort of use one end of a bud per, I don't know, two or three jacks. Yeah, I might use it just for two on this occasion. It just gets any stuff out. Bear in mind that I've already gone over this with the uh, dust spray and brushed it off. So this is just to clean out these sockets. So when it comes to XLRs, I don't know anything better than this, so if you know of anything, let me know. I use uh, cocktail sticks, so give it a little bit of soak in the alcohol, and then run it in and out of the socket. And then do that 400 million times until the desk's done. Just a bit of a close up look of how to clean ribbon cables. These are the ribbon cables um, and they sort of link every part of the console together. So if you take it off, get a bit of the, D, the Deoxit D5. I like to spray it inside this part of the ribbon cable, so the bit with the holes, so a bit of female, and on the male pins. If you press the can lightly, it doesn't spray, it just sort of trickles out the end. So just get a bit of that over the pins. Grab your deoxit brush and just work that in. And then leave it to dry and then I'll come back to that in a minute and clean it with some uh, alcohol spray. I'm just going to let that dry first. Now the, the deoxit's dried off of that, um, what I'm going to do is give it a quick clean over with some alcohol. Got some in a container, so I give the brush a little dip. Just give it a nice brush over in a couple of directions. This stuff evaporates pretty quickly, so don't worry if it looks like there's residue left. Another thing I like to do with ribbon cables, which a lot of people forget, is with the wipes, obviously work out how to open them. Get the ribbon cable and give that a clean. Because that'll probably have some dust on it. Can't hurt, you want it off everything, so. the world's most tiniest screws. I'm only going to put a couple back in at this point just to hold it in place in case I put it in the wrong order. I'm pretty sure I know the order. Uh, I would suggest taking pictures at every step of the way just so you know what goes where. Also helps if you filmed it like I have. Um, 
Hopefully I'll get it right in one, but we'll see. I don't know if you can see that, but I've labelled every ribbon where it came. So this is top M, I know it's part of this strip, and that's the top M for middle. Just to make it a bit easier. Finally got it back together, everything's in place, no bits missing. Obviously I've got to put the knobs on, but I'll do it when that's flat. One thing to remember is clean the compartment that came off. So in this case it's the rear panel, just in case there's any stuff on that. Uh, so I'm going to do that with some of those citrus wipes and then give it another going over with the citrus cleaner. And I'm going to leave that to dry before I put it back on because uh, I don't want any moisture going inside the desk. One thing to note, this, this may look like a big mixing desk, it's 24 channels as you can see, but it's actually a fairly straightforward one because each group of eight channels comes on one board. On the bigger desk you get one board per channel and they take well, probably quite a bit longer to clean to be honest. So this is this is fairly a fairly simple desk to take apart, and all the groups of eight channels, they're exactly the same layout. So it doesn't matter what order you put them back in, and all the ribbon cables are really easy to work out as well. So this is a fairly simple desk. Just zeroing the desk so I know where I am. See the audio. Got it working. I'm going to put all the knobs and faders back on the desk. I've sorted them into colours and counted them just to make sure they're all there. And they're all there, I didn't lose any, so that's good. Um, if you're not familiar with your desk, I'd probably not only split them into colours, but also split them into sections. So you'll end up with loads of cups full of knobs, but at least you know what goes where. Uh, I know this desk, I know where they go, but I might need a couple of pictures to just see whether things go for the master section. Um, yeah, wish me luck. I would also recommend zeroing the desk, it makes this a lot quicker. I haven't, uh, which is going to be a pain, but oh well. Oh, feels so much better. And now to zero the desk, as in set all knobs to uh, 12 o'clock, except for the auxes, turn those right down, have all the faders down, and make sure all the, all the buttons are in the right position. So, yeah.
you can see, all the pan knobs are set to 12 o'clock, so they're centered. All the levels are down, more pan knobs. All the EQs are centered, all the auxes are down. Oh, this one. All the auxes are down, and all the levels are down. Uh, same goes to the whole desk. All these, and all the buttons are set to up on this section, so ready to rock. Now, I've got to test it to make sure it works. At this point, it's taken eight hours. Whoa. And now to test to see if it works. Power's up. signal on one side Just a few more days You can bring me down You know just how I feel And I must be dreaming Anything you say Couldn't change my mind Okay, that's great. Um, I'm going to test all of it because uh, if, anyone, if, I, if any recording needs to happen, I'd rather know what's broken before there's a recording session. So I'm going to go and do the same test on every single channel. Um, I'm going to do it with microphones through the XLRs, check the direct outs, check, check the inserts, so plug the compressor in, make sure those will work, check all the EQs, make sure that works, uh, check I can record through all the subgroups, check I can record through all the direct outs, everything and that can take some time but I'd rather know now that something's not working and fix it rather than halfway through a session done recording all the artists go home go mix and go that's weird my phones are a bit quiet so I'd rather know now take the time and do it thanks for watching my series on how to service a mixing desk please like subscribe comment um, for a desk this size, this is a 24 channel 8 bus Mackie desk. It looks like quite a big desk, but it's not really. It's, it's not really a proper large format console because each group of 8 channels comes on one PCB, whereas a proper large format desk would have a PCB per channel. So this is actually pretty quick to clean. This took about 8 hours in total, but it'd probably take less than that if I didn't have to film it and you know, mess around with cameras and lighting the whole time. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. If there's anything I've missed or anything you do differently, I know everyone's got their own secret solution for cleaning every part of a mixing desk. So yeah, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, it works. Well, sort of 99.9% .9 of it works. I've got one channel that's still cutting in and out. So I'm gonna have another look at that. But apart from that, it feels fantastic. I mean, everything just feels so much better. It's spotless. Also, it smells really nice in here, which is what everyone wants in the home studio. So yeah, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment, tell everyone, and tell them to tell everyone. Thanks.